Hey Aaron. How's it going? Hello, Carol. I'm doing just fine. Just been relaxing at home. Why do you ask? I wanted to have a chat. Or more like a request actually. A request? You know the wedding next month, right? I want you to not come. Excuse me? I want you to skip it, Aaron. What? Are you joking? How could I skip my own wedding next month? I'm the groom, aren't I? A groom not attending his own wedding? That's unheard of. This is no joke, Aaron. I'm serious about this. What? You're seriously asking me to skip my own wedding? Me? The groom? My wedding? Yes, I am. I understand this is a lot to ask. Hold on a second. Why? Would I have to skip it? Why? With just a month to go before the wedding? You need to explain this to me. Yes. I suppose I should start from the beginning. Firstly, we found out yesterday that my daughter is pregnant. Wait, what? Betty is pregnant? She said she was feeling unwell, so we took her to the doctor. She's three months along. But here's the thing. According to Betty, you're not the father. Excuse me? The father is a boy named Mark. A family friend we've known for years. Betty's childhood friend, to be exact. She's pregnant with his child. What are you saying? Did Betty cheat on me with this guy? That's a harsh way to put it. They were dating back in middle school. They became distant. When his family moved away, before high school, but then, Mark moved back here about six months ago. It seems they rekindled their old relationship. What do you mean they rekindled their relationship? She's engaged to me. Calm down, Aaron. Here's the thing. After all that, she ended up getting pregnant. Betty wants to have a wedding with Mark. He's her first love, her first boyfriend, and now the father of her child. As her mother, I want to support my daughter's wishes. He's the father of my first grandchild, so of course I want her to have a wedding with Mark. Doesn't the idea of wedding her first love sound romantic? So Aaron, will you please not attend the wedding? I have no idea what you're talking about. So what you're saying is that, because she's pregnant with this guy's child, she's breaking off our engagement and planning to marry him? No, no, you got it all wrong. I'm saying she'll get married to you, not to someone else. What? Yeah, the wedding ceremony will be with Mark, but we won't break off the engagement. She'll register her marriage with you. Ha, huh, why? Actually, Mark has recently quit his job, and his parents are unstable financially. The ceremony would be great with him, but I'm not so sure about him as a life partner. Wait, I don't understand at all. And there's more to it. Betty said that she wants to raise the child with Mark, both during her pregnancy and after childbirth, so she wants to live with him in the new house. Ha, huh. wait, do you mean the new house? The one that Betty and I were supposed to move into at the end of this month? Yes, that's the one. She said that she wants to live there with Mark and their child as a family of three. So, she'd like you to either stay in your current apartment or move to another one if that's not possible. Hold on a second here. So, I'm not only being robbed of my wedding ceremony but also the new house? I'm the one who's paying for both the wedding and the new house, you know. I even took out a loan for it. Don't be so petty about money. Since you're working for a good company and making good money, Think of it as a gift for my daughter. Ha, huh, a gift. For the wedding and the baby shower. Anyway, that's the situation. For the sake of my daughter, the baby in her belly, and their father. Please give up the wedding and the new house. I'll let you register the marriage. Wait, hold on a second. Do you realize what you're saying? I do. There's nothing complicated about it, right? Of course, you'll be her husband in the eyes of the law. So naturally, you'll pay for my daughter's living expenses. And you'll take care of all the child support for the baby she'll give birth to. You're becoming a son-in-law to our family. So as a husband, support your wife and my grandchild. Are you serious about what you're saying? Are you okay? I'm actually worried now. Are you seriously serious? Am I saying something strange? No, I'm sorry. But can you give me some time to think about it? I want to talk it over with Betty, too. There are a lot of things we need to prepare. Really? There's not much time until the wedding, so make it quick. I heard from your mother. 
Is it true that you're pregnant? And you're really going to have a wedding ceremony with your childhood friend who's the father? Oh, you heard it from mom? That's right. The next fun meeting is with Mark. So Aaron doesn't need to come. I can't wait to see Mark in a tuxedo. Betty. Don't you think what you're saying is strange? What is? Having a wedding ceremony with your childhood friend while you're engaged to someone else. And saying you'll live with him because he's the father of the baby in your belly. You don't think it's weird at all. What? Jealous, are you? Aaron, did you want to have a wedding ceremony with me? Should we have another one when our child is born? No, it's not about jealousy or anything like that. It's strange to be engaged to someone and then be with another man. That's the point. Aaron, you were that attached to the idea of a wedding ceremony? I always thought men didn't care as much since the bride is the star of the show. But honestly, Mark is more handsome. So he'd look better as the groom in our Instagram pictures, don't you think? That's why I want Mark as the groom. That's not the point. It's strange to be engaged to someone, then get involved with another man, get pregnant, and have him steal both the wedding and the new house. That's what I'm saying. The pregnancy was a bit of a surprise. But what can I do, what's done is done. Besides, we're not officially married yet, so isn't it my right to date whoever I want? Does it concern you, Aaron? Huh. Once we're married, you will be my husband, so it's all good. About the new house, living with Mark, it's for the baby that's about to be born. It's better for the baby to be with its real dad, don't you think? You just needs to support us as a second father, what's wrong with that? What's wrong? You really? Oh, speaking of getting married, my dad said he wants you to help more with our family business. What? Aaron, you're already helping out with our family business on your days off and after work, right? Once we're married, you'll be part of the family. So my dad said he can trust you with more responsibilities. He's thinking about expanding the business, so do your best. Wait, what is that? What do you mean, trusted with? I've been helping out with the family business out of kindness as your fiancé. Cutting into my days off, it's not a paid job. I'm practically working full-time already, and all of it is unpaid. If I get any more tasks, it's going to interfere with my actual job. But it seems that they are short on hands again and having a hard time. Isn't it normal for families to help each other out? Expansion is impossible. I've been improving efficiency by creating manuals and using macros. But the current staff number is barely enough. If they're going to leave more work to me, they'll have to pay me properly, or it's not worth it. You want to get paid even though we're family? Hmm, I didn't know you were so greedy. That's disappointing. What are you talking about? Then, Betty should help out. I can't keep helping out for free. I can't, you know. I don't know anything about my dad's work. And I'm pregnant now? You are a man, so it's normal for him to work hard. I'll do my best with housework and raising the child. So don't be so narrow-minded and do your best, okay? For me, the baby, and Mark. Narrow-minded. Ah, fine. This conversation is going nowhere. Just do what you want. I don't care. I'll do what I want too. Really? Well, if you're okay with it, then good. Oh, I'll introduce you to Mark next time. No, it's fine. I need to sort things out. So just leave me alone for a week. Aaron, hey. Pick up the phone. What's the deal? Hello, Carol. Is something wrong? Don't give me that is something wrong. I'm calling because Betty said she couldn't get in touch with you. Oh, Betty. I blocked her for now. Because she speaks English, but we're not communicating well. What on earth are you doing at a time like this? Today, when Betty and Mark went to the venue to discuss details, they were told the wedding had been cancelled. They were told that the cancellation fee had been paid and the procedure had been completed. What does that mean? What's going on? Oh, that. I cancelled it. What? You cancelled it? Why would you do such a thing? Because I'm not going. Is there a problem? A problem. Well, it's not my wedding, it's Betty's and some guys. 
right? I don't feel obligated to pay for someone else's wedding. It's my money, so there's no problem, right? Don't talk like my wedding and my money are all yours. It was also Betty's wedding. But, I paid the entire cost of the ceremony up front, didn't I? The agreement was to calculate the gift money and return half after the ceremony. So at this point, it was entirely my money, wasn't it? Well, that's true, but... Canceling without any discussion. Betty was looking forward to it so much. This is awful. I was also looking forward to it. Until I was told not to attend. Anyway, I won't let someone else's wedding be held with my money. If they want to have a wedding, Betty and the other guy can pool their money and start planning from scratch. It's such a waste after all the preparation. What have you done? By the way, is the only issue the wedding? Anything else? What? What else? There must be more, right? Like selling the new house. What? You sold the new house? Yes, I was lucky to sell it, along with the mortgage. I have a friend who works in real estate. Since it's new and in a good location, a buyer was found immediately. Why? Why? That's the house for Betty and our grandchild. Because I'm not living there. The property is also in my name, so I sold it. I don't need a house I'm not living in. Don't do whatever you want. What are you thinking? Oh, speaking of doing whatever I want, I'll quit helping out at my father-in-law's company. I'll finish today. And I deleted everything I created. What? The manuals, everything I created for efficiency, both the paper documents and the data have been deleted. From tomorrow, please work hard in the state before I joined. What? Why would you do such a thing? Even if you ask me why. I'm an outsider who took the liberty of creating this. So isn't it my right to delete or discard it? This is trouble. I can't even do my regular work. Even discussions about expanding our market reach can't be done in this state, you know. Oh boy. Rather, it's quite strange that the regular work is being disrupted. Because the thing I created as a mere fiancé of your daughter is missing. It's absolutely ridiculous to have someone in my position doing work of this level without pay. Please, bring it back immediately. Everyone will be in trouble if they can't work. I don't like it, but... Who exactly is everyone? The employees? I don't think anyone will be troubled. They are planning to quit tomorrow. Huh? Quit? To tell you the truth, your company's work environment is abnormal. The workload is immense because there are few people, and everyone is overworked. Overnight work is common, and there's no overtime pay. And yet, the wages are low. You even make outsiders like me work without pay. There are various other things that violate labor laws. That's why I told the employees. How much they could earn in a similar position at other companies. My usual work conditions, salary, and so forth. I also introduced them to some companies where I have acquaintances. I gave them business cards saying that my company is also recruiting. The employees were all very happy. They said they're all going to hand in their resignation letters tomorrow. What? Wait a minute. They plan to use up their paid leaves until the date of resignation. No one is going to come anymore. How can any work be done like this? What happens when there are no people? What are you going to do? Well, it's not my decision. Wouldn't it be the Labor Standards Bureau that decides? I've reported everything about this case to the Labor Standards Bureau. Huh, the Labor Standards Bureau. I went to the Labor Standards Office. With evidence of illegal long hours and non-payment of overtime, I expect an investigation will be coming soon. What have you done? If the Labor Inspection Office conducts an investigation, the company will really be ruined. Oh, so you were aware of it. That you're doing something that shouldn't be done. And now I'm worried about what the neighbors and relatives will say. If the company that's been handed down from my great-grandfather's generation gets ruined, how will I explain to my sisters-in-law? It's all right. You don't need to worry. Huh? I've already explained the situation to all the relatives. Both on my side and yours. What? Since the wedding was cancelled, I combined it with my rounds to greet those who were supposed to attend, and I explained the situation in detail. 
I also distributed printouts of your and Betty's chat messages. Everyone listened very sympathetically. No way. Thanks to my explanation, they understood. They all agreed that the cancellation of my engagement with Betty was inevitable. Huh. Cancellation of engagement. Calling off the marriage altogether. Huh. Isn't that obvious? After all this, there's no way we could marry. It's a blessing in disguise that we haven't legally registered our marriage yet. Ah, about the compensation for breaking the engagement. I think you'll be hearing from a lawyer soon. All future communication should be through the lawyer, please. Hold on. Do you think you can get away with this scot-free? There's a baby in Betty's belly, you know. And yet you're doing such things, like trying to bankrupt my company. Are you saying it's okay if me, Betty, and our grandchild end up in ruin? I won't care even if you lose everything. You, and all other unreasonable people like you. What? Despite having a fiancé, she cheated and got her pregnant. She want to hold a wedding with her mistress and live in a new home. And you, who condone this and treat me like a slave, you all deserve to go to hell. I never intended to treat you like a slave. Then what was it if not being treated as a slave? You've taken the wedding in the new home that I paid for. You tell me to provide for living expenses as a husband, even though we're not legally married yet. You demand child support for a child that isn't mine, just because it's your daughter's. You want me to keep working for free, just like I've been doing. How much do you need to belittle me to be satisfied? No, you've misunderstood. That's not what we meant. You're taking it too badly. Too badly? Are you saying you did nothing wrong? Then, it's okay if I do the same thing, right? Let's say I have a childhood friend who's an ex-girlfriend. She gets pregnant, so I decide to hold a wedding with her and live together in a new home. Betty will pay for the wedding and new home. Since Betty is the one I'm legally marrying, she will provide for living expenses and child support. I ask Betty to help out with my family's business for free. Would you forgive me if I told Betty to do this? It sounds unfair when you put it like that, doesn't it? That's because, the positions of men and women are different. This is getting us nowhere. Well, I think you'll hear from a lawyer soon. Please do not contact me directly in the future. Wait. I'm sorry, let's discuss this. I think there's a misunderstanding on both sides. Please discuss with my lawyer. By the way, I did a little research, and it turns out that Mark, the man she cheated with, is married. And he has three children. What? What? Well, that's it. Goodbye. After that, I immediately blocked all contact from Betty's side. I had the lawyer, who was introduced to me by my boss, act as my barrier. A few days later, at the scheduled meeting, Betty and her mother made excuses like I was just depending on you because you were going to be my husband. And her father poured fuel on the fire by saying I reported you to the labor board too, so we're even. Mark just kept bowing to his wife, whom I had called, making my parents extremely angry. The lawyer took them to task, and in the end, I claimed $7,000 in damages from Betty, including the cancellation fee for the wedding. Mark had to pay compensation to both me and his wife, and ended up divorcing his wife. They came crying and begging, but I issued a restraining order and cut ties. Since then, Betty's father's company has gone bankrupt due to investigations by the labor board and lawsuits from former employees claiming unpaid overtime. They tried to ask for help from their relatives, but they were completely shunned. They had to let go of their family home and land, and are now living together in a shabby apartment. They haven't been able to get in touch with Mark since that meeting and Betty doesn't know what to do with the baby and has been crying all the time. They send letters via the lawyer saying please help, but I ignore them, thinking it serves them right. All I can do is hope they will live honestly without preying on others. I was a bit depressed about my lack of discernment, but thanks to the comfort from my parents, friends, and colleagues, I've been able to bounce back and live as before. I'll do my best to improve myself so I can forget about those awful people and meet someone better.